Hello, students. It is me, Alberto Veronica Lopez, aka Mr. Lopez, adjunct professor at Midwestern State University, Wichita Falls, Texas. Uh, but more importantly, your teacher for this distance learning lesson nine. And today's lesson is going to be about the origin of sort of the, the term cold blooded or warm blooded. And this is for anyone who'd like to start or finish uh, this lesson, so this video. Um, feel free to skip to whatever part you'd like. Uh, so let's start. Lesson nine. The times that we were going we're going to be covering are the Paleozoic, the Mesozoic, and the Cenozoic eras, and that is about. Actually, we'll go a little bit further back from the Silurian. And the Denovian, and it's basically when fish then had legs, those legs then became um, amphibians, amphibians then grew bigger, then we had crocodilians, then we had dimetrodons, and all this stuff. Uh, so, what I want you to see is Mesozoic era is when dinosaurs were around, and so we're going to see how reptiles or cold-blooded creatures became slowly evolved some of them into warm-blooded creatures and then there's mass extinction event and then we have us the development of grass the development of uh, complex digestive tracts and many other things so where are we going to start we're going to start with fish uh, so millions of years billions of years have passed life slowly 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 develops uh arthropods happen sea sea plants happen and slowly we finally get in the silurian fish you get bony fish fish with bones inside and vertebrae they're not invertebrates they're vertebrates and over time fish actually in a very short evolutionary time they grew limbs they grew limbs and how do we know that well we find fossils that tell us that but uh, not only that if we look at today if we try to find any sort of fish with four legs we find them we find them this is a, a water dog this is, or an axolotl and you can find this in Xochimilco in Mexico in the wild, if you're very lucky, they think maybe they're they're all gone. They're not. They're on, on the endangered species list, but um, they're they thrive in captivity. And a recent article says that they're 100 times more resistant to cancer than any other creature. So this creature here, if if it turns into an adult, it turns into an amphibian, meaning it turns into a salamander. But it never does that. It stays in the water. It stays juvenile. It stays a kid. Its body does the whole its whole life. And uh, so it swims. It's a fish with legs. Um, but if we want another example, you know, we can look at this cave climbing fish. Or you find these climbing waterfalls inside of caves. And you can see it's developed four fins and it has little claws and slowly it swims with them but it, and it's blind and it claws up and it swims up stream by climbing onto rocks so fish slowly came out from the sea became amphibians amphibians met plants that were on the surface and an ecosystem developed bugs remember arthropods uh, were there also the first plant that scientists have found ever in in a fossil is is mushrooms is mushrooms so you had decomposers as one of the first plants that have been found 400 million years ago that's an exorbitant amount of time a huge amount of time so from 400 million years ago to about 300 million years and to about 
250 million years, you have the development of plants, the evolution of amphibians. Uh, once plants had established their reign over the earth, um, this is what it would look like. So conifers took over the whole earth. This is one of the, the most successful plants uh, during the Carboniferous period. Uh, there was also ferns, tree ferns, and um, some of the conifers or some of the pine trees had, instead of needles, had these really, really interesting looking flat uh, needles. In, you can find these today in one species of tree called the monko, mon monkey puzzle tree. And it's almost alien, but it's because there's nothing else that looks like it. And the reason why it's called the monkey puzzle tree is because uh, if you look at the leaves and you were a monkey and you were trying to climb this tree, you would be puzzled to uh, figure out how to climb the tree. So as amphibians develop, they're slowly getting bigger and bigger and bigger till they become almost reptilian so they're still cold-blooded they can't control they can't control their um their body temperature that's what cold-blooded means um one of the largest of these amphibian slash reptilian almost mammal-like creature so this in-between creature was dimetrodon so this is this is what he would look like and Dimetrodon was like the top predator, the top life form uh, during this Carboniferous period. And then, um, well, there's, there's a lot of extinction events. So before, when fish came onto land and there was amphibians, there's a huge extinction event before then. It's called the Great Dying. Well, 90% of the Earth's life disappeared, according to the fossil record and didn't come back or slowly came back and new life was able to develop. And so this happens over and over and over again. Uh, from the Paleozoic, where Mr. Dimetrodon was hanging out, to the Mesozoic era. And to be specific, the Mesozoic era is when the dinosaurs start developing and then become what we know as dinosaurs. And that happens between 250 million years ago to 66 million years ago. Um, one more thing, or some things about the Mesozoic era, all the continents were together. They were called Pangaea. It was a supercontinent. And what scientists do is they separate the Mesozoic era into three periods, the Triassic, the Jurassic, and the Cretaceous. And Triassic large amphibians like Dimetrodon, crocodilians actually, on two legs. Imagine giant crocodiles on two legs, extremely scary. And they're giant. And they, they evolve, they get bigger. And the crocodilians actually take over the amphibians almost. And then there's another giant extinction event. Something kills them all off. And only a couple species survive. And that's, what we, that's why we have crocodiles now. And... During the Jurassic, ancestors, or slowly things keep evolving, small ancestors of dinosaurs um, evolve into different types. And so one is the ancestors of birds, and the it's called Archaeopteryx. And so it, it's from fossils, the first bird is found. And others get bigger and bigger and bigger, other reptiles, and they become dinosaurs in the Cretaceous period. So here's a map. So imagine this on Earth, so like a ball, a blue sphere in space, and then all the continents are together. During this time, there was no polar ice caps. Everything was really, really warm, right? And at the same time, while reptiles are getting bigger, mammals start happening. So a reptile slowly changes into a warm-blooded creature, a creature that's able to control their body temperature. And the reason why um, mammals didn't become the dominant species 
or sort of bigger than dinosaurs was because, well, the whole earth was completely warm. It was a stable heat all the time. It didn't get cold. It didn't get hot. It just stayed the same. And because of that, cold-blooded creatures could get huge. And because of that, there was actually a lot of desert on Pangaea. In the center, it was all desert. Um, this is a slide or a picture of Archaeopteryx, the first bird. You can see it's a little dinosaur and it's a little bird at the same time. So you had flying dinosaurs, small flying dinosaurs. Uh, you also had, uh, so if we go into the Cretaceous and we learn about dinosaurs, you have walking dinosaurs, right? Land, veg uh, vegetable eating or vegetarian dinosaurs. And this is Stegosaurus. He's a very famous dinosaur. The, the weapon on the tail is called a thagomizer. And that's what it uses to defend itself from other creatures, like uh, the meat-eating dinosaurs. This is a brachiosaur. And you can see how huge it was. And that was because of the climate, because it was warm all the time. So there was these, lo these, these long seropods. Um, seropod are the plant dinosaurs. Uh, this type of seropod. And uh, this, was, this is also a vegetarian dinosaur. And we had dinosaurs that swam. This is a plesiosaur. We had large flying dinosaurs. This is the largest flying dinosaur we've found so far. Quetzalcoatlus. It's a very complicated name, but it was the size of a small plane. Um, if it was in your classroom, it when it's sitting down with its head slightly crouched, it would be to your classroom's tall. It was huge, it was like 20 feet tall. And of course, we have our meat-eating dinosaurs. This is one Tyrannosaurus rex. Um, but there's kinds of Tyrannosaurus rex. I didn't know this. Until one, this one, this Tyrannosaurus rex specifically, comes from Alberta, Canada. And its name is Albertosaurus. My name happens to be Alberto. Hey, look, this is me in dinosaur form. Turns out I'm a meat eater. So reptiles got really big and there's different kinds of them and they're spectacular. Uh, one of the most wondrous creatures. So they're filled with so much wonder that I, the only place you see them in art are in movies or in motion pictures. Um, well, luckily for us as humans, as mammals, Something terrible happened to the dinosaurs. This is great. So what we think made all dinosaurs extinct um, was a giant asteroid that hit by the Yucatan Peninsula. It obliterated most of them on land and slowly it covered the earth in a dust cloud and killed a lot of plants. And because it killed a lot of plants, the biggest animals, the dinosaurs, couldn't survived because they needed a lot of energy and they weren't getting it. So after the dinosaurs had perished, the small mammals, it's like small like deer or rat looking creatures, they're a little reptilian, some of them, um, they're able to move to places where dinosaurs were. So they weren't getting really big because if they went into the ocean, there would be a plesiosaur. If they tried to evolve and fly, there was dinosaurs there too. On land, there were dinosaurs. There were dinosaurs everywhere. But without dinosaurs there, they could go into the ocean and become, um, or rivers, and become things like hippopotamuses or whales. Whales used to be a small wolf-like creature or dog-like creature. And then it moved into the ocean. It became a whale. Um, we see this in fossils. It shows us. Um, the difference between a dinosaur skull, right, and 
a mammal skull is that the amount of holes you could see in them. Dinosaur skulls always had holes here in jaw in in front of the eye. Actually, uh, we only have mammals only had one behind the eyes. Uh, so what happened? So the, the the mammals went onto land, and luckily, grass had just been evolved. 65 million years ago, just evolved. And because of it, um, mammals started eating it. And because grass was responding to sort of something eating it and sort of taking it away, sort of uh, um, digesting it and depositing it across the land, it evolved too. And so it became part, actually grass has a little bit of sand in it. It grows with sand in its structure. So that's what makes it a grass. And so teeth evolved to chew grass. Digestive tracts of some mammals evolved to take out all the nutrients out of this stuff that didn't want to be eaten. And slowly we evolved. It turned small rats, turned bigger and bigger into rhinoceroses, into giraffes into horses, into zebras, into sloths, into primates, into us. So thank goodness for grass because wheat, rice, and corn are all grass. Flowering plants survive the mass extinction event. And so we still have beautiful cherry blossoms and every kind of flowering plant there is. It's the most successful uh, plant, the flowering plant. Um, but you know, not all dinosaurs died. We have dinosaurs still. We call them birds. So birds are technically dinosaurs. So next time you see a bird, it's a cousin. It's a distant, distant relative of, a, of Archaeopteryx. And here, you guys can see how this small uh, rodent creature slowly moved into the water and became longer and more, uh, lost its fur slowly, became slicker, became amphibious, and then became a whale. So you guys can see that. This comes from Berkeley. So the ancestors of whales are dogs. If you ever look at a whale's bones, it's it's a hand. You can see it all merged together as one. And you can see bones. And so, again, everything evolved and it became you. So, thank you, dinosaurs, for, <laughs> for reacting to that asteroid in a very positive sense. So, today... What we're going to do is we're going to make a ton of book. I'm going to show you what that is right now. But the things we're going to need are as follows. Glue. Two pieces of 9 by 12 mixed media paper. Scissors. And a pencil with an eraser on it. So, I'm going to move this away. I'll show you what we're doing today. It is very interesting. It's called the tunnel book, and what you do is you make a scene by layering, layering paper, and then in the morning light, you put it up to a window, and it'll it'll shine like this, and it'll shade everything inside, and you'll be able to see your trees and your dinosaurs. So it'll be really, really, really. So it'll be really, really, really interesting. And so that's what we're going to be doing. It's a bit, it takes a little while, but it's very rewarding. Okay, so you need one piece of paper. We'll start with one piece of paper.
turning off my flashlight. There we go. Okay. So we have one piece of paper and we're going to need our ruler and our pencil. That's the first thing you're going to need. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn this, we're going to divide this piece of paper into three parts, three equal parts. So this is how you do it. You grab your ruler and you measure your paper. It should be nine inches like this. You line it up, it's in the portrait position, it is not in the landscape position, meaning it's taller than it is wide, and you're going to put a mark at 3 and 6, or the letter I. If you don't like the letter I, you can make the letter V, or make check marks. So the points of the Vs are where 3 and 6 are. Okay, so you do that to the bottom of your paper. Now, your top's up here, so we are going to take the top and flip it over and do the same thing. And so we get to learn why our rulers are really important tools. It's because they help us build stuff. All right, so... Make a mark at three, make a V or an or an I. I'm gonna zoom in so you guys can see just how I did it. So you guys can see three and six. Made a V, small V. There you go. Okay, so now that I did it to both sides, now that I did it to both sides, what I'm going to do is connect the V's, the top and the bottom. You should be able to connect with your ruler one side, the middle of, of your mark, to the other side. And what we're going to do after that is we're going to draw a line across. All right, now let's do it again. Repeat. Connect one side of the ruler to the other side. Just slowly move your ruler till both sides are connected. And there you go. Takes some time. And then what I do is I push down with my fingers. And if you look at the tips of my fingers, they're red. But then when I push down, they go white, the tips of them. And that's what I want to push with. And then I slide my pencil across. And voila. You have a piece of paper with two lines that go across it. Once this, so this is the first step. Then we need our handy dandy scissors. Once we have our scissors, we're going to cut very slowly all the way across. And we're going to cut along both of our lines. I'm going to cut. What I do, I, I make sure one of my sides bends down and one stays straight. And then I'm cutting, it helps cut very straight. That's one. I'll do the other one.
Cut, 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 cut. So we have three. Three strips. So we've divided our piece into three. And what we're going to use today, we're going to use two of them. This third one's extra. This is really extra. Maybe you can save it if you want to add uh, layers to your tunnel book. But you can do that later and save it up. It's a good piece. So I'm going to stack two of these together, put them aside. And look, I have my strip. So what's the next step after i have your after you have your strip and you cut it you need to repeat we're gonna cut we're gonna do this we're gonna fold we're gonna cut we're gonna fold we're gonna cut what does that mean i want you to fold it in half by lining up the ends see i'm gonna line up the ends and then squeeze it together so I fold it in half and then you'll see you have a crease on one side that's really easy to see like that and on the other side it's a little harder to see so I pick this side and then I'm going to get my scissor I'm going to cut it in half. There we go. Cut it in half. Nice. I have two. So I'm going to put this down. And what I'll do again is I'll fold it in half and cut again. And so what that is going to give me is little squares. So I want four little squares. off of one piece so look I open it and this one's easier to see than this one and I'm gonna cut it in half again yay awesome so I have two little squares oh I still have my rectangle so I need to fold this half and half and quarter it meaning you divide it by four that's what it means to have a quarter whenever you have money. So what we'll do now is we'll cut it in half. And voila, we have four squares for that one strip that we had. So we have four squares. We're not done yet. We need to make another four squares. So how did we do that? We took one of the strips, folded it in half, and cut it. And then fold this in half and cut again. So that's how we make our strips fold in half. Cut, fold in half, cut. There's a lot of repetition. And so what these are going to be, the reason why we're cutting in little squares, is they're going to help us with uh, making our story or how we construct our image or how we set up our scene. So now I have eight. So I'm put them together, make a little stack. And I'm ready to start. So this is how we draw. We're going to fold and then draw all of our pictures. So let's get to it. Um, there's two folds. One's three sides and one's four sides. Four sides are for this 
start and finish of our tunnel or the entrance and the exit of our tunnel. So we have a piece of paper. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Here's my stack. And what I want to do is I want to grab my piece of paper and then I'm going to put my fingers here like this, like, like you have a scissor, you're holding it like this and you do that to the other side and then see your thumbs, they're there and they're going to fold slowly just a little bit of the end and it should be very, very small. See how small it is? Look at my finger. If you have your ruler, it should be about a quarter inch. How do you know it's an, a quarter of an inch? If you go between here and the end, you have a halfway point, and half of a half is a quarter. So this fold is about a quarter. So just fold it a little bit is really what I'm saying. Fold it a little tiny, tiny bit. And so I'll do this again, two, holding it with two scissors and then folding. So look, it was here. I folded it and I want to turn it one, one over and then fold it up like this again. Right? And then I'm going to turn it and I'm going to fold it up just a little bit again. And I'm going to try to make it the same every time. So see? And that's how we prepare one panel. So we have one. We need to do that to almost all of them. So let's do that again. So you guys can see me fold a little bit. About a quarter inch turn. Fold a little bit. Turn and fold a little bit. And these little tabs, the, the, our folds, is, is where we're going to put some glue. So that's our second one. Let's get three. Four. So do that to our, our third one. Take your time. Don't rush. It's one of the longest projects. This is the longest project of the year. It's very beautiful. Okay. We have that. And how many do we have? We need two that are different. So I'm going to put two away just to make sure I don't fold those. And I'll fold these like I've been doing. One, two, just a little bit, three. Just like that. Do it again. Two, and three. So, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, six little folded squares. I stack them, I'll put them here. And these two, these two are special. They get four. They get four. You fold all four sides. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Voila. So this is our start and our entrance. And we'll put this aside. These will be here. All right, we're ready to draw our pictures. Ready? Let's go. Awesome. So today we're going to be drawing sauropods or sort of uh, vegetarian dinosaurs. 
our Tyrannosaurus Rex are much, much, much harder to draw or uh, much harder to cut out because everything we draw, we need to cut out. So I'm going to flip this over, put the folded sides down. And what we're going to start with, remember what I said is the earth was taken over by conifers. That is true up until we have dinosaurs around 60 million years ago. Um, now 250, the start of the, of the Mesozoic era, you start getting flowering plants and flying, flowering plants get be more beautiful and much more different, uh, in variety. And then, um, you have them, but because conifers were still the dominant life form, let's draw those. So, or Christmas trees. Let's draw little Christmas trees. So we're going to start with the first thing we see. The first thing we see should be like forest. So let's make a Christmas tree. We've all done this. And then get close to the bottom. And then go to the side. And then maybe we have more Christmas tree like this. Oh, fantastic. Okay. So we have, that's the first thing we're going to see through. Remember our tunnel book is in layers and so you can't see you're seeing through things and into the distance and as things get further away from you they get smaller uh if we were to draw the dinosaur first we would only see its leg you wouldn't be able to see the dinosaur so that's the first one we'll put that aside that's our first panel of our story trees through the trees what are we going to see ah let's draw a dinosaur and so once you guys learn how to do this, make one of these tunnel books, I suggest you do it again and really take your time cutting or make them very silly and very simple. It's, they're very fun. So what I'm going to draw, I'm going to draw a brachiosaur. And a brachiosaur, this is how you start. You're going to draw the tail here, and then it's going to come down. And then over. So I'll just slide, I'll zoom in so you guys can see this. So I made a C and I curved down. It's almost like an S, right? S. So then I'm going to curve down and then up. And then down and then up. And then over. And then down like this and over like this and then come down and to the right so it's up down up to the right down right left down right okay so we have our first brachiosaur we're not I'm not drawing any of the in-between space because that will be very difficult to cut with scissors because it's so small. So we keep it like this. So that's how you would draw a brachiosaur. So that's our second. That's what we see. But maybe our brachiosaur is a little lo lonely. So let's give it a friend. So that's our tree. Through the trees, we see a brachiosaur and its friend. So let's draw a little one. Okay, so how do we draw the little one? Well, we would draw maybe the little top, the top of the head first, which is like a, an upside down U, and then like this, a C. Then we're gonna draw that long neck. And then we're going to draw the body. And maybe this one also has a curled tail. Like this. Curls back. So it's like a C. So curve to the left. Come back. Curve to the right. And then back to the left. And then down. And then to the right. Like that. And then we're going to go up here to the head. Curve down. And then over like that so we have the brachiosaur and his friend and his friend's smaller because he's further away 
The things that are further away are smaller. That's how we know. So then we'll, we're going to put its friend here. Okay. And then we'll get another. What we're, what we're using are these panels that have the three folds, remember? Not the four folds, only the three ones. So we get another panel. And then what we can do is draw a bunch of forests behind a brachiosaur. Let's draw that. And they're much smaller. Maybe, yeah, that's about right. So very small little trees. And that's good. Now I have two extra ones. Two extra ones. You can draw whatever you'd like. You can draw T-Rex. You can draw anything that you wish to add to your picture. More trees, maybe another brachiosaur. Remember, if it's farther away, it has to be smaller than the second one. If it's closer, it's got to be maybe only the head or something. Maybe it's only the head of the brachiosaur. If you're just going to put the head or something. So you see through the trees... You see a head, and then you see another, this brachiosaur, and then the little one sticking out, and then you see the pine trees. But it's up to you, whatever you want to draw. If you draw a T-Rex, maybe it's going to come eat the long-necked dinosaurs. It's up to you. Um, I am going to draw mountains for the way, way in the back. So way in the back, I want to draw mountains like this. And then for my extra piece, remember, I maybe you can draw a dinosaur if you want. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw tall hills like this. Okay. And then what do we do after that? Well... We're going to cut them out, and there's a way to cut them out. So we have all our pictures, and we're going to say this is the, the very back, then that goes, this goes in front of that, and then this goes in front of that, and then it's the little dinosaur, and then it's the big dinosaur, and then it's the pine trees, and then it's the entrance, and behind all that is the exit. So we'll put that there. And what we need to do is we need to cut these out. So how do you cut them out? Well, you have your drawing and you have your folds. I want you to open up your folds like this. Open it up. And what you, you'll see is this little square. See the little square here? Well, we need to get rid of the little square and we need to cut out the picture. So this is what I do. I get my scissor and I go cut with the tip of it, cut the little square corner, and see that's my little square corner here, put that aside, and do that to the other side here, and which square corner is it? Well, it's the one at the bottom, and now I'm going to cut my picture out, and yours can be a lot simpler than mine and whenever I cut with my scissor is going to stay still and then I'm going to I'm going to move the paper and not the scissor so cut a little bit turn remember just close little by little cut it's better to cut careful than to cut quick no it's not a race we're making art So you guys can see how I'm cutting. Take your time. 
the important part is not to cut all the way. And what I think I'll do is maybe make my trees a little shorter so I can see the points, their points a little better. And so that I make sure that this isn't too tall at the end. <clears throat> so I have my trees, put that aside. This is the extra, this can go into a recycling bin. And so we need to cut out all our other pictures. So the same way, open it up, cut the corners, and then cut the image. It should take you a bit of a time. Take you a little while to do this. And it should, it's okay. That's, it's really good for you to learn how to cut very, very delicately. Remember, if the paper doesn't rotate, it's because you're cutting into it. So you always let go of the scissor just a little bit. And then rotate to where you want and then come down. So there we go. I'm like I'm cutting the edge. See here that means that you cut all the way back. You remove the whole the whole outside of the dinosaur. You try to keep a little bit of tab and that lets you glue it. So that's the dinosaur. behind the trees. You can line it up so, to see what it's going to look like. Do this to this dinosaur, right? I'm gonna speed up just a little bit. Or what's the Jurassic Park song? Um, let's see. Do 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 is erase some of the lines. So I'll show you. I did the, I did it with this dinosaur. I changed my mind twice on it. Because I couldn't cut it. If something's too small to cut, don't cut it. So you guys can see here I have a line here and a line there. And so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna erase you guys don't normally see me erase because I draw with marker, but this time I wanted to show you with pencil. So, do it again. Just gently push away from you and then erase any sort of line that you don't want there. Okay, so I have the smaller dinosaur. One's behind that one, like that. And then. And I have my pine trees. So you can tell, you can really think about how you're going. If you want to make clouds, it's um, whenever we glue, we glue things upside down. And once we start gluing, you guys will see what I mean. If you still don't get it, ask your teacher. They'll help you out.
So, cutting. And sometimes when something's really tough, really sharp like this, I cut it very simple first, like that. And then I go back and I cut it a little, a little bit more uh, carefully. Sometimes you, if, if the point doesn't want to come off off of a piece that you're cutting off, I always just rip it, but it has to be a very, very, very small piece. So look, I'm cutting there, taking my time. It could be triangles. I'm just making it fancy dancy. Right, so I have my pine trees. Remember, I cut the little corners on all these. So we have the pine trees behind there. And then we have, this is the simplest one, right? If you're having a really hard time, I would say just, uh, I would make squiggles. I would make a landscape and pine trees. But, man, it takes a while, but take your time. So, hills. And then, mountains. Um, okay, so I'm going to open this up. Cut this. Cut this. Now you may run into some trouble if you make your drawing come up all the way up. It actually needs to start about a quarter inch lower. So knock off about a quarter inch off the top of your drawing. If you have really, really tall things like mountains. Um, and then cut your drawing out. Because you're, you're going to run into trouble. Um, what we're making next is a box that's going to be two and a two and a, um, two and a half inches square, and you'll see what that means. So it'll be square, and this drawing might be too tall for it. So I cut the corners, cut my drawings top if it's really tall, like mountains, and then cut down and make ridges and peaks. And so. Is that, what is that going to look like? Well, we're going to have our mountains in the back. And maybe my pine tree here is a little too tall in the middle. So I'll make it shorter. So you can see, you can, if you don't like something, cut it smaller. That's better. So it'll look like that. Okay, now we're ready to make the start and end of our book. And this is how we'll do it. Let's see, make sure this one come down a little bit. Just to make sure. There we go. That's right. Okay. So this is our start, this is the start. So what we need to do is what we look through. We open it up and then what we're gonna do, we're gonna cut the edges. Remember the, how we cut the little squares off? We cut the squares off of this. Cut the little squares.
And then, this is the start. Your your end is the same, but um, you're not going to do this this uh, next part. Your start is different than your end by because you have to. Once it's a cross like this, this fat cross, you have to fold it in half like this. End to end, fold it in half. And then what I want you to do is cut close to the edge, but not really close. You're going to remove the middle just a little bit. And you're going to try to squiggle it. Don't make it straight. I make it, I squiggle it because it looks like a dream, like a daydream. And look, I cut, what I did was I started cutting the folded side, not the open side. See how this side's open? This side was folded. I cut, and then by removing the cut side, I'm able to open it just like a heart, and then we'll be able to see are seen. Okay, so that's how you do the, the the opening. The end is done this way. You open it up and just cut the little little squares at the end, and that's how you finish your end. Now we're gonna build it. So that's the end. Cut the little squares, it's ready. Okay, so these are our start and our finish. And all our little panels, all the extra stuff, put it in the recycle bin and recycle your paper. Okay, put these away. And we're gonna make the box now. The box, our box is our other sheet of paper. You needed two, remember? You should have an extra strip. This goes in the recycling as well, or you can fold it into more squares and then make more little scenes or add dinosaurs or add trees. Okay, so we have our piece of paper and we need our ruler again. Like this. And we're going to line up our piece of paper in landscape position this time, meaning wider than it is tall. And I want you to make, remember, line up the edge right here to the edge of the ruler. And if we measure one of our little squares while it's folded, like I'm going to get our dinosaur, if we measure, it should be about two and a half inches. or less. See? It's about two and a half inches. So what we want to do, we want to make a tunnel or a box for it. So how long should it be? Two and a half inches. How wide should it be? Two and a half inches. So I go two and a half. So two, and then halfway between three and one, I'm going to make an I there, or you can make a V just like we did in the beginning. And then two and a half or 25 cents plus 25 cents is 50 cents or five. Um, or two and a half plus two and a half is five. Because two halves put together is one. Two plus two is four. Half plus half is one. Add them together, five. And then plus two and a half, so is seven and a half. And if I say seven plus two and a half, well, I'll go half and then two. One, two, so that's ten. Fantastic. So this is the bottom of my paper. See? It's the bottom of it. Uh, and so now I have to do that to the top of my paper. So what I do is I slide my paper on top of my ruler Ta -da! 
I'm lining it up, and it's the same numbers, remember? Two and a half. I line it up to the little lines right underneath it. Two and a half, five, seven and a half, ten. See, now I have lines on the top of my paper and on my bottom. And what you'll notice is that you'll have, right, on the top and the bottom, you'll have one short side. That's what you're going to notice. All the way on the right. And that's okay. That's what we want. And now what I want you to do is make connect all your lines. So the first line to the first line on the top. First line on the bottom, first line on the top. Connect them. And we're going to make lines by connecting all the sides across. So we're going to make bridges. That's a bridge. And that's another bridge. And this is another one. And last one right here. So I gently move my paper, hold really still, remember push really hard, and then push against the ruler and push down and you have your line. So I have my four lines, look. And now that'll help me make a box. So let's fold the box. How do you fold? Well, there's lines on this side and if I flip it over, there are no lines on that side. So I know this is my inside and that is my outside. So I'll grab my paper after I have my lines and I'm going to fold along the line. So how do I do that? Well, I have my paper and I put my hands together and I'm going to pinch wherever, wherever the line is. Right here, just pinch a little bit. And go to the other side and then pinch there where the line is. Okay, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to fold and then gently fold along the line by pinching and moving this down and pinching and pinching and pinching and slowly bending the paper along the line. So that's our first line. So now what I'm doing, if you pay attention, we're folding so that everything's moving towards a box. So now we have that, and if this helps, you can put it on the table and fold it along the line like this. Take your time. So the table would be my thumbs, and then I'm slowly like squishing it down and making sure that when I squish it down, it lines up with the line. That's my second one, and I'm going to roll it, and if he, it, what will happen is that it might get too thick right here, so I open it up just a little bit so it's thinner, and then it will allow me to really fold it along the line. And if that's too hard, that's that's when I come up here and I pinch 
where the line is and then I slowly pinch. Put my hand on the inside and then pinch along the line. On the other side, pinch there. So I take my time. I try to get the box right. And then I see which side isn't folded. Oh, that side, that line's not folded. So then this is my last line. Fold it. Take your time. Voila. And now, if you open it up a little bit, if you connect these two sides, you get a tunnel, you get a square. So that's why we did that. So now that we have our tunnel, we can glue it all together. So what you do is you open it up. You open it up and you'll see there are four sides that are the same, and then one short one. Stay away from that side. Go to the first section that is the same as the other sections. And then you're ready to start. How do we start? Well, we start with our start. Remember this? So that's our first square. And we're going to bend this down. Bend this side in just a little bit. And see, that's why we took off. A little square because if the square was there we wouldn't be able to do that all right handy dandy glue you can use a glue stick you can use glue any type of glue will do and only little drops just tiny tiny bits see just a little bit so um, I'm going to put, decide which one's the top, which one's the bottom. It's a hole. It doesn't matter. It's square. So that means that there is, there is no wrong answer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two dots of glue on the bottom. That's it. Two little dots. A little dot, not a lot. And then I'm going to push it down here. And I'm going to try to line up the side with this line here. I'm going to squish it down. Only the flap, not the top part. I'm going to hold that for about 30 seconds. Or 20 seconds. You can count to 20. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right. Make sure you clean up any glue that squirts out. Or if you don't, that you might end up in trouble later. Okay. So, what am I going to do now? Well, I'm going to get my... Remember how I, I arranged my story? I have my tree... That's the first thing. So then I get to fold the bottom and then the side like this and like this. And then I put two dots of glue there. And where am I going to put it? Well, I'm going to look through my viewfinder and say, I want to see these trees maybe around here about two about an inch away so two inches away so I'm gonna look at it about two inches away is about this far away and I'm gonna put my trees there and remember the corner lines up to that so push it one two three four six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifty six seventy eighteen nineteen twenty I go. Okay. So then I have my other picture. The rest of my picture. 
And so I'll glue the rest of it. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to speed up. One, two, three, four. Glue. One, two. And I think my dinosaur will go about two inches away. Is this my little one? Oh yeah, it is my little one. So that, that one's, whoops, I grabbed the wrong dinosaur. Uh-oh. Have to make sure this is legal limit right here. Oh, just barely. Grab the wrong one, be careful. This one's already folded just a little bit. Right, are these two inches again? So I'm gonna try to separate them the same. Nah, does kind of sometimes. It's up to you. You can get this really close to here. Just give them some space in between, at least one inch in between each panel in the front part, and then the back part you can get them closer together because. Um, there's more light that'll come through there, and you'll see what I mean. So I, I did this part, that's how I have my dinosaur, and then I have my tree, and then because this one's not too far away, this one will be an inch away, right? Because it's, it's almost the same size. It means that they're really close together. So if you have two dinosaurs, and one's really close to the same size as the other one, two, two dots of glue. Um, and that means that it's really close to it, like they're hanging out, they're playing soccer or something. Soccer was not invented then, but maybe. Right, so you have that. And then behind the dinosaurs, now this one I'll do two inches away. Up here, two dots, and you can see how you're building your your uh, your story. You're you're building your landscape. One beautiful trick: once everything is done and said and over with, you can watercolor the outside because these are supposed to be put in front of a window. And you're supposed to use the light of the morning to show how beautiful they can be. And see, look, I'm just pu pushing down the very strip that I put a little bit of glue on. 20 seconds. And then you're able to let go. Make sure the side flaps are all folded. It'll help you out. Okay, and now my hills. are close to my trees. Oh, I forgot to cut the little corners. All right. There. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right. And the last one, the mountains. And that will be not at the end. That's where our end goes, but close to it, about an inch away. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. There we go. And the very end looks like this. And this, the smooth side goes out and all the folds go in towards the center. And this one, I'll put three. One, two, three. Little dots of glue. And then I'll squish it down and count. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Right? So, look. Ooh. Isn't that cool? We're able to see through the trees and see the dinosaurs. And now what we'll do, because this is a box, is fold it. And then you're able to glue the side and the tops. So what are we going to do now? We're going to glue the sides. And that's why we folded all the sides. So I'm turn this on its side like this. Whoop. So you guys can see. And see all these little panels? These little folds on the side? We're going to put glue on each, a dot of glue on each one. So turn it sideways. I'm going to fold this backwards so you guys can see what I'm doing. Have your teacher help you if you guys are a little needing help. Okay. So I get one dot of glue. One dot of glue, one dot of glue, one dot of glue, one dot, one dot, and one dot, and at the end. If it starts to spread, just you know, spread it with your finger or a piece of paper, an extra piece of paper. That's the cleanest way. You get a little piece of paper. And you spread it like that. And then you're going to fold up your side. Fold this. Fold it just a little bit. Remember, 20 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I'm going to start with my start, right? I'm gluing that together. 14, 15, 16. Oops, I let go of it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay. And then I'll do the end as well. This will help a lot if you do the ends first. Really squeeze. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Okay, and better. And now do the mountains. So it takes a little while, right? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So go. And you have to do that to each one. That's another one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Do that to the bottom one. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, four, seven, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 18, 19, 20. Do that to the bottom. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh my goodness. And I'm stressing this a lot, but you really need to hold it. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Fantastic. And see, all of the layers have been glued on the side and the bottom. That's really the minimum amount of glue that you need. And then what you do is you fold the top. And do we have any tops? Yes, we do. Only the start and the bottom and the end have places you need to put glue on. So I put three dots of glue for the top. One, two, and three. And then look what I'm going to do. I'm going to fold... 
and then glue the end, and again count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. I'll do because it's three thirty seconds. Thirty. There you go. Thirty seconds, and now it's glued. That's the secret. Just holding. Very still. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Oop. Making sure. And that's at least thirty seconds. This one I added a little too much glue, so I have to wait extra. See, don't add a lot of glue. So, it, you think it might be a good idea, but it isn't. All right, so that's it. That one. I'm gonna fold. Oh, came apart. So that one, nine, ten. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Right. Yeah? Nope. Still no. Still no. So I'm really squeezing this time. Really need to get that on there. Um, and then I fold it all the way. So I glued the top. And then you fold it. And this other side is fine. You can choose to glue it. It's a choice. But you don't need to. And then what I do is I put three dots of glue here at the bottom. Okay, I'll put four. Four big dots. Squish. And then what I do is I push it down on the table. And I wait one minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's 60 seconds. Sing happy birthday two times in your head. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear students. Happy birthday to you and many more. And so what we can do is imagine there's a sun in the back and then see all our layers very beautifully now what you can do it's really fun is put watercolor on the back of it and if you do that it looks like it's a sunset so try that out i hope you guys have fun with your tunnel books keep persisting and don't don't worry about it. It'll be very, very, very cool. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next week. And have a nice day.